Hi artists, we're back. We've been really busy these past weeks learning about color, line, texture, form, and space. And today we are going to cover the last of the seven art elements, the element of value. Value is one of the seven art elements. And value deals with the lightness or darkness of a color. It can also be created when a light source shines upon an object and creates a highlight. It can also form shadows and also help that object cast shadows. In two-dimensional art, value can help give a shape the illusion of mass or volume or it can give an entire composition a sense of lighting and depth. Let's look at these shapes that were drawn and then shaded to look like 3D forms. This use of shading to darken certain edges and areas uh, shows us an example of value as the white that is left from the paper color now represents a highlight or suggests a source of light is present. Value can be represented in black and white through varying degrees of grays to transition from light to dark. But value can also have color. Uh, we would call this chromatic value. And this means that varying amounts of black and white can be added to a color to make a range of tints and shades. We could also add gray to a color to make many different tones of that color. Let's take a look at this glass jar that I photographed as the sunlight was coming through it. If you were trying to draw this jar, how would you use highlights and shadows to help make the jar look real? Let's take a look at my coffee mug that's also out here in the sunshine and the shadow that it's casting onto the surface beneath it. We as artists can use highlights and shadows with our understanding now of value to make shapes look real and three-dimensional in our work. Let's take a look at this light source, which happens to be a flashlight shining onto this apple. Do we see the bright spot? On the, on the skin of the apple and the shadow that it's casting onto this paper. Let's also take a look at the way this glass jar is catching the light from my flashlight as well. And if I move the light, the shadows move too. I can make the shadows come forward or back. So depending on where I'm aiming the light, the shadows are going to change direction the highlights and the shadows on the objects themselves will move as well with it. Let's think about how we can use value as artists to try to capture this idea in our drawing using different types of art supplies, maybe pencils or colored pencils. And also I know a really neat trick my friend Mrs. Winkler taught me using markers and water. Now, Let's try to draw this apple using an ordinary pencil where we'll add some shading to the body of the apple. We'll cast a shadow onto the surface around it. And we'll also show a highlight on the apple all using an ordinary pencil as our first time making something that shows value. First, you should start with the outside sketch of your shape. As you can see, I'm adding where I see the curves here in my apple at the top. Just to add that other surface. And 
as I apply shading to create this idea of value, it's important to go, uh, to move your pencil or whatever you're drawing with in the direction of the shape you are representing. For example, for this curved, very curved apple, my lines should also curve to help communicate that this is in fact a spherical object and not flat. So therefore all of my shading lines should go from run all the way from the top down to the bottom and follow the shape of my form. Look at this really dark value I'm creating over here. I can even smudge it with my finger. Again, blending in the shape of my object. I can give it a little swirl there in the middle. There you go. Okay, that really did help pull those different values together. I also want to cast a shadow onto the surface represent that and that can be a darker value than any of the values I placed within the object itself. As you can see there. So this is just an ordinary pencil that hopefully you have at home. Next I'm going to show you a fun, a fun trick that's worth trying that you can try using just regular water-based markers and some Q-tips and water. So artists, if you're ready, let's make an artwork using value and also showing different glass shapes using color. Uh, this will be a lot of fun. It's a really neat trick a friend of mine showed me. We can take a sheet of computer paper like this. I want to start it start this out by dividing the paper in half and then in half again. This should, when I open it, it will give me four equally sized sections. I plan to cut along the fold lines right now to give myself four smaller rectangle pieces of, uh, rectangular pieces of paper here to work with. In addition to the computer paper little rectangles here that I have, I have one larger sheet of a thicker paper. Uh, if you don't have thicker paper, that's okay. I like to use something a little thicker since soon I'm going to add a little water to this project. And thicker paper absorbs it better, but regular paper will do just fine. I think. I'm going to take a piece of my one of my little rectangles here and I'm going to start it out by folding it in half, like this, uh, lengthwise. And along the, the line of symmetry, I'm going to make up a shape. And I want it to resemble a, um, a vase. I'm looking for it to resemble a vase. So let me lean on this right now and just bring my pencil out and in. And it could come down, 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 and connect back to that line, just like that. That can be my first one. While keeping it folded, I'm going to very carefully cut this shape out and set it aside so that it's ready for what is next. So there's this one right here. Okay, that's a pretty good one. I can use that. Uh, for my next shape, maybe I want to try something a little different, maybe a little rounder or maybe something that looks like it's a little bit more bubbled. Uh, so again, let's locate the fold line, which is right here. So I know that's got to be in the middle of my vase. And I can bring that line out, bring it down. And there's those bubbles I was talking about. Maybe I'll just do three great big lumpy bumps like that and then carefully cut this shape out as well. My high school art teacher, Mr. Falcone, told me a very long time ago that in art, it's nice to arrange a composition using an odd number of, of items. 
So far I have two vases, even though I only have, uh, even though I do have four rectangles I could cut, I think what I'll do is just invent a shape for the third one and arrange an artwork using three. I'm back and I have my piece of paper that I'm ready to make my artwork onto. I've taped it to this board just to give it a little bit of support for our video. And I've cut out three of these uh, paper vases and I have my pencil. I also have just an ordinary pack of these uh, water-based Crayola markers. I have a little bit of water right here in this jar. You could use a paintbrush, but I actually think you might do better with just Q-tips and that's not until later. But let's get started. So to get started, I want to first decide how far up from the bottom I would like a false like a table or some type of surface for my vases to sit upon. I like to measure using my hands. So I'm going to take four fingers right here and line them up right here at the bottom edge of the paper. I hope you can see that well from where you are. And I'm just gonna make a, a dark dash there. I'm going to slide that hand across to the center of my paper and do it again. Just kind of make a little mark there in the middle. And one last one here at this end of the, uh, of the sheet of paper. Then I'm going to very lightly at first connect these dashes and check it to make sure it appears relatively even that it's not too wavy and I'm feeling good about that being my starting line for the table one at a time I'm going to trace these onto this sheet of paper and watch and see how I lay them out and trace them as you'll see that I will also involve a little bit of overlapping. Now you can have some fun with markers. So I've found some water-based Crayola markers. You'll just need a color for each of the vases to start out. I'm going to start by outlining the shape of this first vase with my blue marker. And I'm going to trace the whole shape just like that. To help it look more like an actual 3D form, I'm going to add a little ellipse here at the bottom to help represent that this has a bottom and that it in fact is not flat. I'm going to add just a little bit of an extra line here that will help follow the shape of my object. Maybe I'll show a little opening there as well. Okay. Now I'm going to use a another color to kind of do the same thing to my center glass bottle. This bottle will be represented with some red. Again, I'm going to give it a the idea that it's got a bottom. I'm gonna give it an opening here at the top. And I'm going to add lines that follow the curves of the outside of the shape. I'm gonna bring some of those curves to the inside of the shape to also help it appear to be more three-dimensional like that. Now I'm choosing a third color to trace the pencil outline of my last glass bottle that I had over here. And again, I'm just going to try to make that line fairly heavy with this marker ink. 
give it a little bottom right there. And again, I want to bring in a line that kind of runs parallel to whatever is happening here at the outside. Also a line up there that kind of helps communicate that it's got an opening. Just like that, as you can see. I don't want to forget the table that these are sitting on because that line would be showing through my glass because glass is clear. So I also did exaggerate that line there as well. Let's take a look at where I made the heavier colored lines inside of each of these three vases. Do you see how I made the vase a little bit darker with color on this side of the object? That would mean that on this side, that's a little bit lighter and brighter, where we're going to have more of our paper showing through, this is our highlight side. So if we're pretending that light is hitting the objects here, that means that our darker edges are down here and our cast shadows will be coming away from the objects here along the edge that's darker. I'm going to use my brown marker and just add a little suggestion of cast shadow here only onto the table surface beneath these uh, the edges of where these three vases are sitting if you can see that okay so I did it very lightly but I did add it with just a little bit of brown marker now we're going to create more of a variety between uh, the dark of our color and the light of our paper, we're going to add more of a range of values. So I wet a Q-tip in a little bit of this water right here. So now it's got water on it. And I want to follow the direction of the curve of the vase, just like when I was shading in that apple using my pencil earlier. I want to sweep my Q-tip in the direction that I would picture, that I would imagine the, uh, the glass following. And I'm just sweeping it right across like that. I'm going to wet it and pull it right through the marker, just like so. Follow that line up and bring it across. I'm going to also, wet this edge inside here just a little bit and I want to leave some of the white of my paper there to represent the highlight on this three-dimensional form. I'm going to flip my q-tip over to the other side and just very carefully get in there with my shadow that this vase is casting and just soften the effect of that. Maybe I'll soften up that table line as well, just a little bit. And there we go. To avoid smearing your colors into one another, I do recommend taking a fresh Q-tip for each of your colors, for each of your vases. Uh, I wouldn't want to pull the brown I used there into this red vase. So I'm going to, like I said, I just took a fresh Q-tip and now I'm following the curves of this lumpy bumpy vase right here. And giving this uh, curved edges as well. Also being mindful to leave that white area in there for the highlight. And just bringing all that around like that. For my last vase, again, another Q-tip. And I'm going to wet it just with a little bit of water. I'm going to follow that opening up there. I'm going to bring it on down. 
And because these are colored see-through glass, where they overlap, it's okay to show the other color through it. In fact, it helps it just helps with the effect that we're going for here. And I'm just going to wet that Q-tip and bring this on down. Again, I want to follow the idea of the shape of this vase, leaving just some white, meaning I don't need to fill in all of it with my Q-tip. I want to leave just some of it there to show that this object is not flat. And there we go. Just gonna give it some highlight there. And there we have it. If I want to add more, uh, more shadows on the ground or more color in the vases themselves, I could. Uh, but right now, for now, I feel like I'm pretty happy with this. I hope that you try this trick and I hope you try it using different colors that you like with your markers uh, because each color uh, will expand to so many neat uh, values to check out as you water down the color and make this effect. I hope you had fun making art with me today and learning about value. And if you make any artwork at home, please, please, please take a picture of it and email it to me or your art teacher because we love seeing this stuff. I miss all of you and I hope you're well and I hope to hear from you soon. Oh good, you're still here. If you want to have more fun showing glass objects with markers uh, where you wouldn't have a table involved to have that line running through it and just wanted to show the overlapping of the colors and the shapes, this could be something fun you could try as well. Just make your vase tracers or your bottle tracers by folding your paper in half to create those symmetrical objects as we went over together before. So keep that part. And then after outlining the shape of your your object. Decide where there would be extra planes or surfaces within it. So you see here I drew this one to look more like a three-dimensional shape and I did the same to this blue one. I'm going to do the same thing right now to this one here that I'm choosing to represent using red and I'm going to do uh, a series of angled lines running through it. I'm going to give it a little bit of a, the uh, suggestion of a bottom. It wouldn't be an ellipse this time because it's a squared off shape. Again, you want to darken certain areas. I also like to leave the lines a bit broken. I like to have that opportunity to let light be part of my artwork wherever possible. So avoid making your lines too thick or too heavy. Um, and you can see here where I had some fun with some blending. With your water, you can really have fun uh, pulling that color down in the direction of however you want your glass to appear to have as its shape. Here, if I want to imitate a curve, I would do the same thing with my, my Q-tip, maybe run it up there. And at this point, just keep an eye on it so you know when to, when to stop, when to stop diffusing that color to create the lighter values. And keep your eye on it to see when you're satisfied with the effect of your marker and water glass. So there you go. So anyway, thanks again for drawing with me today. Please try this at home and then show me what you made. Again, thanks everyone. Until next time.